And with that, it looks like we are ready for a Looney Tune, so let's give it up for Winterbit. How's it going, everyone? I am Winterbit, and this is Looney Tunes for the Game Boy, made by Sunsoft in 1992. Um, I don't think we're going to do too much of an introduction, but I'll go ahead and, and shout out my, uh, my crew back here. Everyone with mics, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Author Blues. I'm Mr. Thrones, Core Shasta. And this is Cards of the Heart. How's it going? And I want to give out uh, shouts to um, Jay Hawker, Yuki, Yoshizilla, everyone else here to uh, join us for tonight's little, little bit of a portable block we have going here. <laughs> and... Uh, Without further ado, I'll go ahead and get things started. And I want uh, the audience to go ahead and count down with us, if you're willing. We're going to start from five. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! All right, so welcome to Looney Tunes, the classic experience. Each of this game's seven stages has its own character, its own uh, premise. It's kind of like its own episode of the original Looney Tunes. So I, I did take a little bit of damage there on purpose, just so I could pick up uh, health instead of actually... Uh, okay, I messed up the boost right there, so I'm going to go ahead and take this casual route. Um, I picked up a, a piece of health there, so I wouldn't collect an extra thousand points. At the end of each stage, the uh, points you collect count down, and so you want to minimize the amount of time that the ticker takes. So um, while I was talking there, we killed Yosemite Sam and Marva the Martian. Um, one thing you're going to see a lot in this game is momentum boosts, just like this. If you just continue holding in the direction you're sliding off of a ramp, or if you happen to um, hit something that damages you and it propels you in the opposite direction, then it's actually going to allow you to maintain the momentum that way as well. So we're, we're going to see that a couple of times. Here we have a, a bit of a refight with Yosemite Sam. No idea why he's underwater now, but... <laughs> doesn't have a helmet either. Yeah, it just is what it is. So, um, I'm going to see if I can manage this. I learned this trick two weeks ago. It's a bit of a zip involving the damage boosting I just mentioned. Also, shoutouts to underwater levels, starting in the first like minute and a half of any game. <laughs> the only way to speedrun. And we nice. got it. Nice. nice. Good, good, good. good. All right, so remember the episode where Daffy Duck went underwater to kill a giant mechanical fish and retrieve a floating treasure chest? Absolute classic. Mm. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was stage one. We will see um, Daffy Duck's B-move, the Frisbee, return in a later stage, which is actually the final stage. But uh, for now, we're going to be Tweety. Now, Tweety Bird has infinite jumps, as you can see here. However... What he does not have is a very fast run speed. So what we do there is uh, pretty much just the same momentum boost off of the uh, baseballs instead of using slopes because there are no slopes in this level. This level can be hard to hold on to that momentum, though. There's a lot to block you. And uh, if you want to do this optimally, you're going to try to boost off of Sylvester a little bit as well, which can be a little bit temperamental. Yeah, exactly. I've, on many occasions, I've gotten caught by Sylvester while doing that. I fly through the air because he jumps on the same frame that he catches you sometimes. And I've actually been able to mash out of it and maintain my boost speed. So that's wow. been fun. I think I had that in a PB at one point as well. <laughs> so that was a, wow. that was a good uh, clip. There we go. Thread the needle there. And I'm going to go ahead and get caught on purpose right here. So I have some iframes and just grab the bird seed. Nice. nice. All right, coming up, we do have some time for some donations during Porky's stage. So until the timer hits 265, you can go ahead with that. Sure thing. We have $5 from Light Kitty Kara. Hey, winner. Uh, Hello from Japan. Congrats on getting to SGDQ this year. Good luck on the rest of your run and Rhino Rumble. Also, please let Taz have a wall meet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just for you, Kara. We have $5 from Blue Reaper. Pizza ordered, stream playing. I think we're in for a good night ahead. P.S. Hello from Australia and good luck to all the runners. $200 from Optical Opie. No comment, but thank you so very much for your donation. All right, so now we actually have to start doing some work. Um, what I'm going to do here is a bit of a pacifist run where I don't shoot and I actually save some uh, lag frames that way. 
And just weave around here. This is where I usually take damage, if at all, but we're good. This is the one stage where it actually does not waste any time to die. You can just uh, get damaged and then uh, lose your life and just keep going with the auto-scroller. I do want to make note of how similar this entire stage is to the original Super Mario Land 1, by the way, if you remember the final stage, as well as the boss fight against the Tonga, which we're going to have a reprise of right now. Let's phase one, and... Acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> really well done. Why does Star throwing a spoon and a fork at you? Yes, it is a, uh, it's a silverware star. All right, so this is the stage where you do absolutely nothing to go fast. Every, every block that you break actually costs about a frame of lag. However, Kara did request wall meat, so there you go. Wall meat, yeah. <laughs> All right, donation time. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. quite hear you, winner. <laughs> I have ten dollars from Dashley Ten. Hey there, winner bit. Dashley here. I heard the audience likes dad jokes, and I was saving this one for your stream. What do you call when you get when you cross an insect and the Easter rabbit? Bugs Bunny. <laughs> anyway, here's ten dollars towards runner's choice. Dashy, why? Why would you do this? Heck. Thank you so much. I keep hearing the Copacabana in this song. Is it just Same me? Here. No, no. Yeah. I've, I've actually sung that the entire time, the entire 60 seconds on stream before. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Speedy Gonzalez's theme song is Queen's We Will Rock You, so have fun with that. <laughs> and we're starting that stage right now. The platforming in this one is probably the most intense platforming in this run, with, with some exceptions for uh, the last stage that we'll see. Definitely. Um, and also, this uh, stage features really the main, pretty much the only glitch we'll see in this entire run. Um, so, so a real speed game. It's got a, a lot of really tough platforming and glitches. Eat your heart out. Oh yeah, the classic. Now this frog can be a real meanie sometimes. How can he be mean? He looks so cool. Yeah, but the thing is, every time he lands on the ground, he's actually going to cause a, a bit of an earthquake. And during that period, you cannot jump. So that's what's tricky about that. Now, right here is the clip that author mentioned. Um, it's going to be a nine second time save if I get it. However, it is pixel perfect, so I have to line up just right. Here we go, it looks good. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, nice. 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 Now, I really can't explain how that works. It just kind of does. It, in a way, it, um, it, it's kind of involved with how the game treats the blocks as sort of enemies. And yeah, it just, the, uh, the, the, the wall is supposed to stop you during the dance, but because you're standing on top of an enemy, the collision gets a, a little bit strange if you do it at that precise time because some of the other blocks on screen are moving simultaneously. Exactly. Um, that was Dracula, by the way. And Not now anymore. he is forever gone. I had no idea that Speedy Gonzalez was just Alucard in a mouse costume. <laughs> Instead of a whip, he has a tail. Yeah, exactly. A tail whip, if you will. All right, um, hey. Roadrunner stage is probably my favorite of the entire seven stages we have to choose from because the B button for Roadrunner is actually a meep meep. You can meep meep at any time. You can even buffer your meep meep. You can press B in midair and it'll meep meep when you land. Not only that, you can split your meep meep into two individual meeps. I'll show that off in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. That's just silly. <laughs> Alright, so right at 149, Wily I Coyote appears and we can make quick work of him. Normally this boss fight is absolutely insane, but pretty much all you have to do is keep him in the corner and just jump a few times and we're good. So this looks like it'll probably be a low 133. Okay, mid 132. That's still quite good. Yeah, yeah clap up for that. 
So this is the last stage coming up. and We are it's, already coming up on the last part of the entire run, yep. This is definitely some of the most complex platforming here, um, mostly just because of the challenge of avoiding instant death pits, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you get damaged by the ghost, sometimes you don't, and I don't know what makes the difference. Just RNG, I suppose. Anything that you don't explain, you can always blame on RNG. So far, so good. Ooh. And I jumped a little early right there. That's okay, though. Every time you die in this game, it just sets you back to the beginning of whatever room you were in last, so that's not actually too bad. So now we have a bit of mini boss rush, including two bosses we have not fought at all yet. And right at the end of this entire boss rush, I'm going to be attempting a uh, very interesting clip. Hopefully I'll be able to get it. It's very challenging. But I got it down to a 70% success rate before leaving for the event, so hopefully this goes well. Shaft's a cool spot. I'm going to focus here. <laughs> oh no, he dropped it. Ah. 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 Yeah, Winterbit was trying to uh, take a bounce pretty high off of that boss right at the very end, and you can actually skip this entire room right here. It's a pretty significant time save just if you can line up that jump. Yeah. I didn't even get the momentum boost. Eh, hold on a second, I'm gonna die here and so I can show off the momentum boost in this room at least. They won't even let you die. <laughs> what the heck? I'm too good at the game. No. So rude. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's hear it for that ghost, everyone. Yeah. That ghost gives yeah. the second chance at this boost. There it is. Oh, Let's there we go. go. Oh. Oh, and it didn't even oh. carry it through. <laughs> That's okay. So hopefully this Elmer Fudd fight goes well as compensation for my awful stage seven luck. However, knowing how this fight goes, it's probably not going to go so well. This boss is very unpredictable. The best thing you want to do is keep how much fun in the corner, just like where's trying to do there. He's extraordinarily hard to hold in the corner, though. When you bounce on him, it, it's seemingly random uh, which direction he moves, how high he bounces, when he jumps, things like that. Exactly. And phase one is actually worse than phase two, especially if you can't keep him in the corner just like this. But this is the only situation in which phase two is actually predictable. So we are coming up on time. And... There it is. Time. Great run. I'll take it. Gotta love these bonuses. Oh, yeah. This is the most annoying sound in the world, and shortly it will be followed by the world's worst uh, Looney Tunes player playing the demos of each level we visited. And then we have the world's slowest credit scroll, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on my... Uh, I shout outs really quickly. Um, first of all, shout outs to Laura Chambers, who is the only person in the very special thanks section of the con uh, of the credits. No idea why, but you know, shout outs to her for doing something special for this game, getting it published. Let's go, Laura. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. <laughs> And again, I want to shout out um, Author Blues, who pioneered sub 11 for this game. What was my time, by the way? 11.32, I think it says. Yeah, 11.32. Okay. All right, that was a little better than my Calathon run. I'll definitely take that. And Author Blues was the first person to get a sub 11, which is, um, it was a bit of a holy grail for a while. And now it's down to 10.14, thanks to a runner named Chan Kuhl from Germany. Shout outs to Germany. And um, my current PB is 10 seconds behind. So it, it is a very well optimized speed game. And if anyone's interested in it, you know, feel free to drop a line to me or off or anyone who runs it. Um, I, I think I can catch everything else that I want to shout out on the next run, which is Rhino Rumble, which will be coming up right after a short intermission. And uh, I'll go ahead and spare you the, um, the suffering that we have here as far as the credits go. But I do want to point out that Foghorn, Leghorn, and Pepe Le Pew appear on the end card. But... All I can assume is that they ran out of either budget, time, or memory on the cart to include them in their own levels. Which might explain why two of the mini-bosses that we saw were not included in the rest of the game. So, just a, a theory. A game theory, if you will. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks. And I'll see you in a few minutes. What an incredible run of Looney Tunes by Winterbit. And right now, Winterbit is setting up for Rhino Rumble. So before we get to that, we are going to play a quick Twitch ad, and we will be right back.
while they are setting up for the next run. In the meantime, I'd like to let everyone know that we do have a couple of bid wars going for an upcoming game in the marathon, Fire Emblem. We have the Fire Emblem Fates name choice. Currently, Keanu is in the lead. The Fire Emblem Fates route choice. Revelation is in the lead currently. Fire Emblem Fates male or female avatar. Female is currently winning. And the Fire Emblem Fates avatar height tall is in the lead. So if you'd like to change the outcome of those bid wars, please get your donations in. While we're still waiting for a setup, I'll read a few donations for you. We have $50 from red to go Alucard, what is a mouse? Nothing but a miserable pile of cheese. But enough talk. Have at you. Also, hi, Yoshizilla. $5 from Dad5153. My son Josh wants to know if it's rabbit season or duck season. A generous $250 donation from Anonymous. No comment, but thank you so very much for your donation.